I had never heard of a Pokemon tag lock before until my good friend Ace asked me if I wanted to do one. A tag lock is a two player version of a Nuzlocke, where one player plays the first four gyms before tagging in their partner who completes the next four gyms, before sending the game back to the first guy to finish it off. It's kind of fun and honestly I hadn't planned June's video yet, so I decided I'm down. We chose Pokemon Black and after a couple days, Ace sent me the file. Ace decided to be much kinder than I, and the team he left me in Mbasa City was pretty great. Just before I got the save file, Ace was telling me how much he loved his Magby, named Sauce. So what do I do? I caught a Tepeg, which I forgot to name, and killed his Magby. Without mercy, I watched the life burn out of that small Magby. His death? Undeserved. But I did it anyway, because I wanted to, because I had the power, and he was also kind of funny. I replaced Magby with Tepeg and continued on. I went left towards Driftvale City and enjoyed his banger music. I will say, Pokemon Black and White are extremely slow games that are annoying to battle in, but the music and visuals are very nice. Well, after meeting Clay, I went down into the cold storage and beat up Team Plasma members. Whilst I was recording this video, I was also watching the Season 5 finale of Legends of Tomorrow, which was such an amazing show that was so bad for no reason after Season 4. Just like The Flash, after four seasons, the show just kind of takes a massive quality to Either way, after beating all the members, I wrapped up my first one hour session of the game and turned it off. I started my second session in the morning of the next day. Well, I meant to start things off with Clay's gym, but I accidentally spent 20 minutes running around and trying to find it. I finally did so and breezed through the gym until coming across leader Marilyn, some random gym leader with a Porygon. I switched out my Pig Knight into Catwoman, the Leopard, and for some reason the Porygon predicted the switch and used Signal Beam, which obliterated Catwoman and down she fell. No one mourns the wicked though, and we continued on to the gym without replacing her. We start the fight against Liliana, and he leaves with Bastiva. I've been starting all my fights with Pig Knight, but I do pitiful damage with a Heat Crash before switching into Paul the Gastrodon. Bastiodon hits a weak takedown before taking almost all of his health from a water pulse. He heals and we do it again. But then we switch out to Venusaur and he takes him out easily. Out next comes Tornadus, which I send in my Tornadus. Oh yeah, Ace's starter was Tornadus. That's pretty cool. August is just built different, and we beat Clay with a few air cutters. Next out is Audino, who barely stomachs a super effective revenge before getting cooked by an air cutter or the following turn to win the fight. Liliana hands us our badge and our earnings for cutting the ropes to let us enter Charge Stone Cave. Luckily for me, I know a lot about Charge Stone Cave, having done research on it for my True or False theory, which you can watch on my channel. Anyways, I know that's where this game's magnetic field is, so I replace Catwoman with Magnemite, named NSMB2NGE, which stands for New Super Mario Bros. 2 New Golden Edition, and head out. We evolve them into Magneton right away, but get into a rival fight before entering the cave. Magneton proves himself quite powerful, easily taking care of our rivals Ala Momola and Axu. We step into the cave and evolve Magneton into Magnezone, as well as catching Sock, which I named Billy1447, after a commenter and subscriber on one of my videos. I name all my Pokemon after commenters and subscribers, so drop a comment and subscribe, and you may just cameo on the next one. We fight one last trainer before ending that short 40 minute session. I pick up the game a few hours later and make some more progress in the cave, fighting random trainers. But it isn't long before the bell tolls, and as I learned from John Dunn, said not for whom the bell tolls, for it tolls for thee. And in this case, the bell tolls for my Magnezone. I send him out against Regice, which in itself is stupid since I have a new Leo Fall of Mambor, but after landing a soft electro ball, a hard hitting superpower leaves my Magnezone from his mortal shell, making my third kill of the Nuzlocke. With a heavy art, we carry on, mourning the death of New Super Mario Bros. 2, New Golden Edition. With my lead Pokemon now dead, I tag in Robert Denny Jr., the Togekiss, to lead the pack. We get through the rest of Charged Stone Cave, finishing an easy fight with N, get to Miss Stralton City, and add Beatbox the Adamant Wismer to our team. In Miss Stralton City, we are told we gotta find Skyla or something, so we move forward, encountering a Needle Queen on the route ahead. We catch it and name it Gloomy4308. We beat unimportant trainers before heading into the forgettable tower that's only purpose in the initial game is to fill time and give you access to ghost Pokemon, even though ghosts have nothing to do with birds or the story. Like it all, all this exists for is lit, which doesn't even make sense because you just could have put it in a weird desert place where you catch Confabrigus. Is this rant important to the story of the game? No. Am I projecting? Maybe. I think it has something to do with my father. Anyways. We go talk to Skyla, she tells the bell, and that should have been my first sign that things were about to go south or more specifically, six feet under. I ignore this dark sign and catch a Squirtle in Celestial Tower, naming a PTL1545. My subscribers have very weird names. He goes to the box, but Destiny calls for him, but Destiny demands a sacrifice. We face off against some random ace trainer, and her exegel somehow gets fall. 
I don't know. I guess Paul's stuck. Either way, John Dunn took another life and we just have to move on. I evolve Squirtle into a Blastoise and we head into Skyless Gym. The puzzle made for Little Kids admittedly does trip me up, but I get there eventually and we start the fight against the girl so-called Skyla, which turns out to be Technician Cristiano. Cristiano starts the fight with Raikou, which is an unfortunate matchup against RDJ. But we send him beatbox and she takes care of Raikou swiftly. Next in is Houndoom, who gets two shot by waterfalls from Blastoise. Next in is Clampro, who is taken care of easily by dumpling our Venusaur, earning me a 6 gym badge from Cristiano. We take the Ironhead TM in the badge, spending way too long figuring out how to leave the area. I found out eventually and fight my way through Twist Mountain, catching Shroomish, which we named Stupid.org. We leave Twist Mountain before heading into Icarus City. I assault every gym trainer and challenge a gym leader, Technician Webster. Then we Spoofalot and I League August. He's a scary face, causing my revenge to do very little damage. But he attacks next turn, dodging my revenge to take the knockout. Next it is Tangra, so I bring in Embora. A flame charge does less than half before I'm paralyzed. Next turn I get full para, but then I hit a heat crash the next turn and just miss the knockout. Tangrowth heals and I get paralyzed again. I hit a flame charge, but I get para next turn. I'm too weak to continue the fight, so I switch into August to hopefully take care of the Tangrowth. But his super effective ancient power puts an end to our starter. Rest in peace, August. You are a real one. I send in Robert Denny Jr. to finish Tangrowth with an air splash. His final Pokemon is Dordrio, so I send out Blastoise. I use Surf doing about a third. I switch to Aqua Tail and get a crit, ending the bird and the fight. We leave the gym, but immediately get ambushed, and we are immediately told off to go to the Dragon Spiral Tower and deal with Team Plath. We put August to rest and replace him with the Nita Queen I caught earlier. I easily defeat Team Plasma at both Dragon Spiral Tower, but it also leaves Dumpling our Venusaur in the progress. It's a negligible death, just like Paul's, and replaced Venusaur with stupid.org. We then head to the sandy place I was talking about earlier and wipe the floor with Team Plasma there too. We have to relief and with a legendary or something at this point, but I'm not really listening and press on, before defeating Grunts until I make it to our final city. We head into the gym, giving each trainer and the gym leader the Gojo treatment, before completing my portion of this tag lock. I tell Ace and send him the file. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, check out some more of my stuff and subscribe for your monthly Pokemon videos.